Welcome back to Charting with Dill, and as always, I'm your host, Dylan McCurcher. So, some major news has occurred since the last time we met. Sign World, corporate owners of Regal Cinemas have announced that they will be closing all their cinemas for the time being, with the expectation that AMC and other theater chains are to follow. This news comes after yet another major blockbuster delaying to 2021. We will circle back to this news later on the show, but first, let's dive into some numbers. The past weekend's domestic box office slate looks pretty normal compared to past weeks. Christopher Nolan's Tenet still reigns on top of $2.7 million, dropping 21% in its fifth week of release. However, a big shot for this past weekend comes in second place as the 1993 film Hocus Pocus makes $1.9 million in just over 2,500 theaters, selling tickets for only 5 bucks. If we adjust these numbers to the standard ticket price, being $9 or $10, the family Halloween flick would have made just about $4 million domestically, reigning as our king of the weekend. Moving down to third and fourth, the New Mutants and Unhinged drop 11 and 12% in their sixth and eighth weeks respectively, and Infidel rejoins the top five, earning just about 460 k Moving along to expand our look to the worldwide market, we have some movement there as Tenet overtakes Sonic the Hedgehog for a third spot in the year, crossing the $300 million mark with its $307.3 million total so far. The Chinese film The 800 continues to lead the pack, gaining its total to $441.6 million so far. Speaking of worldwide turtles, let's circle back to what we opened the show with. Recently, the United Kingdom have started a second wave of COVID-19, which initially caused Sign World to close all its theaters in the UK. Following this news, MGM decided to delay No Time to Die to April 2nd, 2021, nearly a full year after its initial release date. In fact, No Time to Die was the first film to be delayed due to COVID-19, so it's kind of ironic how the newest Bond film should be the one to close theaters once again. Since No Time to Die's delay, Regal announced the closing of the domestic theaters, while they state the closing is due to New York not opening their theaters while allowing other entertainment options such as casinos and restaurants to reopen. However, the UK's closing is a big deal for James Bond films. Just looking at the four Daniel Craig starring Bond flicks, they've all made major money in this market. In fact, 2012 Skyfall is just $19 million off from being the highest grossing film all time in the UK, having earned $103.2 million, which had set the record at the time with 2015 Spectre in third with $95.2 million, both having been beat out by 2015's The Force Awakens. So at one point, James Bond films had held the top two spots in the UK markets. Then for Daniel Craig's two other appearances as 007, land in 19th with 06 Casino Royales making $64 million and 08's Quantum of Solace in 38th with $51.2 million. With No Time to Die being slated as Craig's last appearance in the titular role under normal circumstances, this could have easily topped Spectre and maybe even have put up a fight with Skyfall and The Force Awakens for the top spot in the UK cinema's market of all time. However, No Time to Die was not the only film to quickly dot off its release date after theaters had announced closures. Denis Villeneuve's sci-fi fantasy film Dune, which was slated to come out on December 18th, has now been pushed all the way to October 2nd, 2021, pushing the Robert Pattinson starring Batman film to 2022. Dune is one of the few blockbusters still left on the schedule for 2020, as was being my most anticipated for the rest of the year. With Dune escaping to 2021, that leaves Disney Pixar's Soul, Fox's Free Guy, and Warner Brothers' Wonder Woman 1984 as the only major blockbusters for the remainder of the year. However, rumbles of Soul being dished to Disney Plus have been on the outskirts for months, and Wonder Woman is not shy about moving dates, previously doing so six times and counting. Finally, to close the show, we return to 2020's Top 10 Films Domestically, which has no movement on the chart. And until further notice, this is our year's final Top 10, with Bad Boys for Life being the king of the 2020 domestic charts, with $204.4 million as its final gross, joined by Sonic the Hedgehog as the sole film to earn over $100 million domestically. Birds of Prey and Doolittle Follow, both having been called flops at their time of release, end up being in the Top 5 grosses for the year, joined by The Invisible Man rounding out the Top 5. The Call of the Wild and Onward hold off Tenet for 6th and 7th, and in just 5 weeks, Tenet was able to overcome The Gentleman and Fantasy Island to secure the 8th slot with $45.1 million domestically, a film in which under normal circumstances with no COVID, no theater restrictions, anything like that, could have easily opened to just about $100 million for its opening weekend. However, with all that being said, who knows when I'll be back for more box office updates. It seems that it is, in fact, it's time to die for the 2020 box office season. But until next time, this is Dill, signing off.